Hey guys, how are you doing? This will be the last video for authentication in Nest.js using GraphQL, Prisma and Postgres. In this video, we will be implementing the lockout feature. And then after this video, we will work on authorization using strategies, guards and custom decorators. So yeah, I would say without further ado, Let's get started with the logout feature. In order to be able to log out, first let's sign up because currently in my database I have no users, right? So let's sign up so that we have a user in our database. And if you haven't implemented sign up, sign in functionality, Please watch the previous video where I will teach you how to do it. All right. So let's sign up again. Here again, we have to provide a variable called input with an email and a username and a password. But here I see I made a mistake because I have emailed twice. So let's get rid of it. Yep. And now hit play. And there we go, we get back a user with a username and an access token and a refresh token. So far so good. And in our database, we should have a new user with a hashed refresh token. And what we want to do now with our logout feature is every time we hit logout and there's a user with a specific ID who has a hash refresh token that is not set to null we want to set this hash refresh token to null. And by doing so, um, users won't be able to refresh their tokens and stuff like this. The only um, chance of getting back a valid hash refresh token is by signing in again. So yeah, let's work on the functionality that when we hit the logout uh, mutation that the hash refresh token, if it's not already null, is set to null. For this, let's go to our auth folder here and then let's create a new DTO and we call it maybe just logout response.ts and here we create a class which we export and we name it logout response and this logout response should just have a field called locked out, which is a boolean. And here again, we need some decorators. We need a field decorator, which we have to import, which does not work, strange. And we need to use another decorator called object type, like this. And we need to import the field decorator as well. These decorators here, GraphQL is able, and again, by creating these DTOs and using these two decorators here, GraphQL is able to generate all this stuff here for us. So we don't have to do it. And yeah, this is um, typical for a code first approach. We provide the code and then all the GraphQL stuff here gets auto generated for us. So we just have to write basically TypeScript here. Now let's go to our our service and here we create a new method which is async and it is called logout and here we have to provide the user id which is of type number as argument and then what we do here is we say this dot prisma dot user and then we use update many here and we want to update a user where the ID is equal to the user ID. And then also where the hash refresh token is not null, not null. And here I made a mistake. It must be like this. And then we have to provide some data which we want to update. And we want to set the hash refresh token to null. And the reason why I only want to update a user with a specific user ID where the hash refresh token is not already null is because this prevents that we can spam our database with multiple mutations, right? We only want to do it once. And if the user has a refresh token 
which is already null, then we do not need to update it again, right? And this is the purpose of this line here, right? So we don't spam our database with multiply useless um, mutations. And then here at the end, we just return locked out and we set it to true. And here's the reason why I use update many and not update, for example, is if I just used update here, I would get an error here and it says that this thing here is not unique, right? The user ID or the ID is uh, unique by default because it's a primary key, but this thing here is not unique. So there might be multiple users who have a hash refresh token that is not null. And because of this, we must use update many here. Now we can go to our auth resolver and we just can create our lockout mutation here. And we just can change this here because this was just auto-generated by us. Yeah, this is um, useless boilerplate. So here we just can say lockout. The return type here is the lockout response. And this basically tells GraphQL that this mutation will return a field of the name lockout, which is a Boolean. All right, and we can leave it like this, yeah? We expect to get an ID, which is of type number, and this will be our user ID. And all we need to do here is we need to change this from remove to lockout, like this. And now we are able to test it. Going back to our Prisma Studio, we have one user here with a hash refresh token, which is not null currently, right? And what we can do now is we can perform a mutation called logout. And then we have to provide the name of the mutation, which is called logout as well. As I said many times before, this name doesn't matter here, but usually it's named with a capital letter here. And the important thing is that this thing here matters. And then again, this name doesn't matter here with a dollar sign. It can be any name, but it's important that this name and this name are identical. And then also here down below in variables that it's also called ID then. And then we have to provide an ID here and we expect to get back a field, which we have defined in our logout response DTO, which is called logout. And here the ID of our user is one. All right, so let's try it out. And we get back locked out true. And now if we go back here and refresh, the hash refresh token should be null. Perfect. And what we could do now is we could sign in again. So we can grab this email here and we have to provide the correct password, which was one, two, three. Hit play. And here we get an error. And we get an error because this name here is wrong, this key here. It should be with a um, capital I here. So I just copy it, paste it in here. And then also here the type is wrong. Okay, and now let's try again. And it worked. We got a new access token, refresh token, and so on, a new user. And let's refresh here in our Prisma Studio. And yay, we got a new hash refresh token here. Perfect. And we are signed in again.